Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue through our Basically series. For those of you who haven't seen this, this is going to be the series where we put together some of the best decks that you can enjoy that will not require a single rare or mythic to build. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. That's right. So without further ado, let's check out today's deck, a deck that I am simply calling Basically adventures but before we continue if you do like any of the content that i do please like follow and subscribe wherever you watch the content you can support me monthly for a small amount on patreon where i have all of my extended bonus footage posted or for free all you can just do also is just join our growing community on discord your support helps keep this channel going all links are in the details below. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So as you can see, our adventures deck today is going to be Abzan colors, which means it's going to be white, black, and green. You're looking at an average mana curve about 2.6. We have 32 creatures in the deck, four artifacts, and only 24 lands. Our deck in short is focusing on trying to either get a lucky clover to resolve or an edge wall innkeeper so we can keep drawing through our deck and then doubling up, tripling up, maybe even quadrupling up all of our spells to get an insane amount of value to overwhelm our opponent and close out the game. And with that, let's move, of course, into the creatures. So we have Fairy Guide Mother starting it all off here. It's a 1-1 flyer. It's a fairy. Nothing much to it. But its adventure side is going to help us close out games, depending on, again, what we may be facing. With the sorcery side as an adventure, target creature gets plus 2, plus 1, and gains flying until end of turn. Once we have one of our bigger creatures on board, this can help pump it all up and just help smash our way evasively over our opponent. Fowermire Knight here is a great card also because it's a 1-1 Death Toucher, great for chump blocking, but also for its adventure side, you get to draw a card and lose a life. Edgewall Innkeeper here is one of our main stars of the show, so let's talk about this card for just a moment here. Edgewall Innkeeper is a 1-mana one 1-1 one Human Peasant that reads, whenever you cast a creature spell that has an adventure, you get to draw a card. However, it doesn't have to have gone on an adventure first in order to trigger the ability, so this is a really sweet engine piece to help us keep drawing through our whole deck and getting us everything we need as we keep casting spells. Going into the two drop slot, we'll have Shrouded Shepherd here. When it enters, it can give one of our creatures plus two, plus two until end of turn. On the adventure side, however, it's a mini Wrath where creatures our opponent's control will get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So really sweet, again, for those chump blockers and tokens that our opponent may have. Our next two drop is going to be Order of Midnight here. Unfortunately, on the flying side, it can't block, but ideally we want to use it for its adventure side, where we can cast it to then bring one of our creatures from our graveyard back to our hand. Our final two drop is going to be Smitten Swordmaster here. You'll notice that we actually have quite a few knights in the deck already, so I figured this is actually going to be a great way to help close out the game in case our opponent gums up the board. For the sorcery side, we can then gain life and make our opponent lose life where X is the number of knights we control. As far as the three drops are concerned, we'll have Woodland Acolyte here. When it enters, it simply just draws a card for us, and then Mend the Wilds on its adventure side can put a permanent card from our graveyard back on top of our library. So it just helps us again keep recurring what we use over and over again. Ardenvale Tactician here is a great little tempo card. It's a 2-3 flyer, and it's a knight. On its adventure side for 2 mana, you can tap up to 2 target creatures. Great again for just holding down the fort while we can build up our game plan or just get chump blockers out of the way. Hollow Scavengers are final of the 3 drops here. For 1 mana, you can pay and sacrifice a food, so then give one of our creatures plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. We don't really have too much in terms of food synergy, so this is not going to be something we do too often here. However, on the adventure side, you can create a food token for 1 mana, so in some instances, that food token may be situated situational and can help us stabilize. For the 4 drop slot here, we'll have our trampling elf fox warrior, that's a whole mouthful there, but otherwise this is going to be an instant that allows us to give a monster roll token attached to one of our creatures. For those that are unaware, monster roll tokens just gives one of our creatures an aura roll and it gives it plus one plus one and trample to ensure we can push through damage against our opponents. And then finally, in the whew, seven drop slot, oh good lord, you're going to be playing Beanstalk Giant. Realistically though, this is going to be a three drop on the sorcery side because for its adventure ability, we just basically to dig out a basic land and put it onto the battlefield. But what's really sweet about that is it comes into play untapped. Literally, really helpful for us to just ramp our game plan out. On the other side, of course, it could be a great finisher because its power and toughness will be equal to the number of lands we control. Now, in order to maximize all the value that these creatures have, we're of course going to talk about the main star of the show, Lucky Clover. So, just for a moment here, hear me out on how this works. Lucky Clover is a 2-mana colorless artifact that simply reads, whenever you cast an adventure, instant, or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. So obviously, with the exception of just Edgewell Innkeeper, every single one of our creatures has the adventure mechanic. This means that if we can at least get one Lucky Clover to stick, you'll have an insane amount of value by doubling, tripling, sometimes even quadrupling the amount of value we can get. So this will, of course, just overwhelm your opponent and just close out the game very quickly with each and every one of our spells. 
remember that again we are playing with a budget deck so of course we're going to keep the simplest possible for the land base you're going to have five planes five swamps seven forests some sand step citadels here they enter and tap but they do of course gap for the perfect mana we need for the deck and finally some escape tunnels here escape tunnel basically is just going to be a souped up version of evolving wilds because let's be real this is going to be much better off mostly just because for the ability you can either sack them just to get a basic land out or if you need to in a pinch you can also sacrifice them to give target creature with power to less that cannot be blocked in some instances that could mean the difference between a victory or a defeat and to round out the package if you are interested in taking this into best of three here's going to be your best options for the sideboard here soul guy lantern is going to be your catch-all for graveyard hate as always i always am emphasize utilizing this card specifically knight of dust shadow here it does help us of course with the knight game plan if you want to do that but also it'll shut off your opponent's life gain to make sure that you can keep control of the board an extra copy of fairy guide mother if you need that if you want to do more evasive attacks a single copy of flaxen intruder here you can make a ton of bear tokens if you get that to trigger off with the lucky clover but ideally you can use this mostly just for artifact and enchantment hate an extra copy of order of midnight and an extra copy of Spit and sword master depending on what your opponent is playing a copy of Intrepid Truffle Snout here, mostly it's just because it can help us make some food tokens, but ideally you can also use its pump ability to give one of your creatures more power in a pinch. And then of course we'll have Gingerbread Hunter here, same thing, this will help us kind of transform part of our deck into more food synergies, which can help us against certain decks out there that we may have trouble with normally in the main deck. And finally to finish it off here, we have a copy of Stormkeld Vanguard here, this was one of our bigger creatures here that can help us close out the game if Beanstalk Giant has trouble trying to push through some of the chump blockers out there, but also you can use utilize the sorcery ability to help give you more diversity when it comes to destroying artifacts or enchantments. Now as far as strategy for the deck is concerned, it's mostly just going to come down to just trying to resolve an edge wall innkeeper or lucky clover as soon as possible. So in this case, you're actually going to want to try to mulligan to make sure you get one of these pieces into your hand in the opening plays. This way, once you can get one of them to resolve, it basically will help your deck snowball out of control and most often than not, your opponent's going to have to either find quickly an answer and if they don't have an answer to either of these cards you're going to be able to run away with the game very quickly edgewell innkeeper will keep your hand full of cards but just remember that the way your adventure cards work it basically kind of gives you the idea that your deck kind of has double the spells than it actually has and that's one of the coolest and best advantages this deck has is the fact that you have a ton of extra things to do maybe when you may not cast one or two things but then you can possibly cast for example your hollow scavengers food tokens or maybe you can stabilize a little bit with your smitten sword master while you start prepping up the rest of your game plan don't be afraid to have some of your creatures get blown up because remember you have cards like order of midnight which can help ensure that you can keep digging them back out again and if you do have a lucky clover this can help you bring back a lot of extra creatures so you can be a lot more aggressive with this deck than you may realize the mid-range power that this deck has even on a budget is extremely good based on just how little of an investment you have However, there are some disadvantages. Anything that blows up your clovers, anything that can exile them, or your edge wall innkeeper, and you'll have a bad time. But the biggest challenge to this deck is, if your opponent is counterspell happy, you're going to feel like you're going to lose two cards for the price of one counterspell. And that's only just because, say for example, you want that beanstalk giant to then resolve. But if you're utilizing it from the sorcery side, if they counterspell that before it resolves, then you'll not only lose the sorcery ability, but you'll also lose the creature itself. So that's going to make you feel very sad. But if your opponent, however, cannot deal with, as I mentioned earlier, some of the extra value that you can get from your lucky clover, they're going to have a bad time only just because it's going to be really hard for them to try to counter one spell, but you can copy that and just get extra out to keep fueling yourself. So keep those things in mind. And when it comes to this deck, it really hinges on ensuring that you can get a Lucky Clover or an Edgewell Innkeeper to resolve. If you get those out, you'll have no problem getting to victory against any opponent. Now, if you are a fan of the deck and maybe you do want to try out some variations of the adventures, as always, just like every one of my other deck techs, I will throw up on screen right now a couple of different variants that I have played that will allow you to invest a little bit in rares and mythics to then pump this deck up and give it even more insane value. Keep in mind, some of the variations may change the colors, but overall, no matter which variation of adventures you have, you'll definitely going to have a lot of value no matter which way you want to take it and with that out of the way here are my final thoughts that i just want to give you overall when it comes to value i think probably out of all the decks we've done so far on the series this one's probably going to give you the most amount of value based upon what you can cast 
However, as you know, there really are two cards in the whole deck that are your linchpin to ensure that you'll get that value. But if you manage to resolve them, you're going to have a ton of fun with this deck, and definitely you're going to have a lot of opponents that will most likely just kind of rage quit. To put it another way, if you're a fan of the adventure mechanic, if you're a fan of mid-range piles, and if you're a fan of getting the most amount of value with such a tight little package where it just helps you just keep going off, even though it's all ultra budget, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to go off and manage to double, triple, even quadruple up some of your instants and sorceries, you'll have a lot of fun doing so, and you'll be very surprised at how well this deck can do, and you will not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!